Hello and welcome to this podcast, which is part of a series called Inventing Embodiment. My name is Jonathan Burrows. I'm a choreographer and also a faculty member at the Centre for Dance Research at Coventry University. Last year, my colleagues at CDARE met online once a week to talk and the conversation kept coming back to the question of how we speak about embodiment. This podcast aims to capture some of the research I was fortunate to hear then. My guest this morning is Mary Louise Crawley, who is a dance scholar at the Centre for Dance Research. Welcome, Mary Louise. Hello, Jonathan. Can you begin perhaps by telling us a little bit about what you're researching at the moment or what's interesting you? Yeah, so I work principally on dance and museums, specifically dance in the archaeological museum. And I've been thinking a lot recently, working through practice research, so choreographic practice research in the archaeological museum about dance as radical archaeology. So offering an alternative way into how we might look at a museum collection or how we might re-evaluate particularly ancient history and culture, especially in terms of how that might uncover previously erased or partially invisible histories, women's histories or histories of bodies of colour, for example. It's probably worth saying as well that my research into dance and cultural heritage in heritage settings is also linked to my work which sits at the intersection of classics, so the study of the ancient world and of ancient Greek and Roman drama and performance and dance performance in particular. And are you uh, dealing specifically with dance or with the presence of the body in general? So specifically with dance, in terms of ancient performance, I've been looking at ancient dance forms, and particularly Trigoidia Saltata, dance tragedy, which is a form of ancient pantomime. But I, I do think more broadly about ancient performance. So if we were looking at something like the tragic chorus, for example, I'm interested in the place of the choreographic within that. But I am interested as well in the wider idea of performing bodies from antiquity and the relationship between those bodies of antiquity and bodies in the present now. And how do you access what has been there physically in the past, which of course it is no longer present, is only there in texts. So how do you approach that if you're thinking about the body of, 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 as, a, as a, an important site? Well, for me, this is where dance practice, choreographic practice is really, really important and essential in terms of a methodology for how we approach historiography. Of course, in terms of ancient history and culture, we have, as you say, there are, we have the, the ancient texts, we have ancient artefacts, we have the vases. So there, there is that evidence. But for me, what is really vital and pressing and what can uncover new knowledge in this field is working through a choreographic practice, which is, you know, where embodiment comes in. And the value of how my embodied practice, my practice as a dancer and a choreographer can speak back to the field of classics and ancient history. And I think it's a generally quite a new approach in the field of classics. And I've been really fortunate to have been having wonderful research and practice conversations between the fields of both dance and performance practice and uh, classics and ancient history. So can you give me a concrete example of what your practice is in the studio in relation to these ancient forms? Sure. So um, if I was to talk a little bit about the practice that was grounded um, in Trigoidia Saltata, so in dance tragedy, the pantomime form, it's a solo practice, it's a masked practice, it's a narrative form. What I worked on for my PhD actually was taking an ancient Latin text, so Ovid's Metamorphoses, which it has been argued may have been a libretto for pantomime artists at the time. Um, and I'm taking selected episodes from that text into the studio and really delving into a textual analysis, but finding out how I can give flesh to that text 
through my dancing body while I use the foundational principles that we know about, about this dance form, that it was masked, that it was solo, that it was narrative. But I'm not interested in reconstruction. It's more a reimagining of that form. And, a and a, there's a sense also of la the layering of the ancient performance form, the ancient text in my body alongside my own somatic history as a dancer. So the uh, the histories that I carry within my own body, of those who have taught me, of traditions of dancing that have been passed down. And I think with the Trigoidia Saltata, it's particularly striking to me the transmission of what one of my teachers, uh, Marcel Marceau, uh, had taught me and carrying on that tradition of, of mime through the body, but also my lived history as a woman as well. So you, you say you're not interested in reconstruction and you use this description that somehow it's, a, it's about a, an imaginative approach to, to what might have been as a way of further analysing the texts, the written texts that do remain. And how does this sit al alongside the idea of dance, for instance, as an ephemeral art form as something that's about presence? That's that's a great question, and it's uh, something that comes up time and time again when you're thinking, particularly about this now, you know, well trodden idea, I, I suppose, of the, the performing body as some sort of archive, as some sort of alternative archive to the other archival texts or material artifacts that we have, and dances ephemerality, and what for me in kind of trying to untangle this tension between the archive and the ephemeral what for me is really exciting is actually about what happens in the present moment of performance and I suppose this links back to my idea of dance as radical archaeology that there's this layering of temporalities or some sort of slippage um, of temporalities between the past the past moment of the text of the past moment of a of a ancient performance, perhaps, of a text, um, the present moment of performance, so the present embodied moment of my performing, but also the future archive that's becoming as well in the moment of performance. So this idea of the moment of performance as being some sort of layering archaeological strata um, or this slippage or shifting between temporalities that I think is quite particular to the moment of performance in the present. And it makes me think as well of Susie Wilson from Clod Ensemble, her idea of performance as an alternative present. And I'm really curious as to, to, to how shifting experiences of temporality sit within that alternative present. I really like that image of performing the future archive that is coming. I, I think that's gonna haunt me next time I perform. So th this this series of podcasts is about embodiment. Uh, you've you've touched upon the, the word embodiment already, but can you say just a little bit more in what ways embodiment is part of what you're doing in this practice and in this um, research to do with uh, ancient forms? Sure. So I think at first, actually, embodiment is a term that I almost shy away from. I, I tend to, although I use it a lot, <laughs> I'm, I'm aware I use it a lot, I shied away from it at first because there's actually a term, I worked for many years as a performer with Ariane Nouchkine at the Théâtre du Soleil and she actually uses the term incarnation, so incarnation or to incarnate uh, a character, um, to give flesh to a character. And so Actually, it's that term of incarné that has always sat with me since I was a very young performer. And so I actually find that that, that term almost goes further than, than embodiment. So I often think about the way in which I'm working with the ancient text or the ancient form as somehow giving flesh, muscle, blood and bone, really kind of visceral incarnation, physical incarnation of language or of text or of mood or of character. But I, 
over my over the years when I've been working at this intersection between ancient history, classics and dance, it's been actually really valuable to use the term embodiment, you know, as a way of speaking, articulating, speaking back, speaking up, I, I suppose, for the value of a dance, an embodied, a sensory practice um, as a methodology, as I said before, for an alternative means of um, of how we might read, write and understand um, ancient history. I suppose for me, embodiment really in that idea of incarnation is really about living the detail of every present moment through through the sensing body. I'm also aware that in the work that I've been doing um, actually with archaeologists, that there is a huge opening into um, ideas of embodied practices and sensory practices within archaeology. So I was really fortunate to, um, a few years back, be working, uh, be part of a network called the Sensory Studies in Antiquity group. Mm. And this group is really, you know, really working at the intersection between different sensory studies, so whether that be haptic, you know, or, or looking at smells of the ancient world or sounds of the ancient world. And now, you know, through the conversations that we've had about dance, also the kinesthetic, that there's this real openness to those different sensory approaches to archaeology and to history. And to also understand that archaeology itself is, you know, an embodied sensory practice being out in the field excavating. Oh, I could go on listening to you describing this uh, work for much longer, but we should probably pause there because I think you've given a, a, a really rich overview of what you're doing and, and certainly one that's exciting my imagination. Thanks so much, Mary Louise, for those thoughts. Thanks, Jonathan. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank uh, you. All right. Bye-bye.